animals are so bad these days that <laughs> at least I'd get a cat out of it. Hey everybody, happy, uh, what's, it, what's today? Today's Saturday, happy Saturday <laughs> evening live tutorial stream. Um, of course, everything kind of went bonkers at the end of the day as it tends to sometimes do here at the Beating Dreams, but we are here for you um, to teach you a fun project this Saturday evening. So our project for this evening is a variation on our Tree of Life pendant. So um, some of you may find this familiar. Um, this is our willow tree pendant. So basically it's just incorporating chain into your tree of life to give it that kind of cool um, weeping willow appearance. It's a fun pendant because it has a absolute ton of movement to it. Like you can see the chain just kind of wiggles and I used a flat length chain so it's got some shimmer to it. So it's just constantly kind of reflecting the light. And then I did throw some little accent beadies in there as well. Like you can see one right there and there's another one right there. So I will say that I was, I wish for my prototype I'd used something that, that stood out a little more. So I'm gonna use something that's a little bit bolder for my accent beads today. I'm gonna use some pearls that I think are gonna stand out a little better against all that silver than um, the Labradorite beads that I used on my prototype. So let's talk tools and supplies for this evening's tutorial. You're gonna need some 16 gauge wire. Um, and you can use any metal you want for this. This is a cold tutorial. That means there's no soldering of any kind. So that means that all wires are fair game. Sterling silver, 14 karat gold filled, brass, bronze, copper, craft wire, colored wire, whatever you happen to have is fair game for this project tonight. Um, of your heavier gauge wire, you're gonna need about five inches of it or so. That is gonna be variable depending on how big you want your, your tree to be. If you're making a smaller tree, then um, you don't need to use quite as much wire. If you're trying to make a bigger tree, obviously you're gonna need a little bit more. You're also gonna need some 26 gauge wire, some skinny wire. That's what we're actually gonna use to make our tree and you're gonna need about four feet of that. You're going to need some fine link chain, all right? And this is um, just a little tiny, like a two millimeter link cable chain. So we're gonna need actually about four feet of that. You're gonna need some 2.5 millimeter beads. I'm using sterling ones, but you don't have to. You could use any 2.5 millimeter beads. And what those um, serve to do is they just take up some space on your little branches so that you're not um, having to completely cover each branch with the chain because that would use a massive, massive, massive amount of chain. You're gonna need your little accent beads and we can use um, six or eight of these. So I'm using some three millimeter pearls tonight. And then for each accent bead, you're going to need a head pin. For anybody who's not familiar with what is a head pin, a head pin is this finding right here. So it's a piece of wire with a flat piece on the end. That is the head of the proverbial head pin. And um, I'm gonna be using six pearls, so I've got six head pins. And then as far as tools go, you're gonna need your basics. That's gonna be your wire cutter. You need to make sure you got a nice sharp one so it'll cut that little bit of bits of chain. Um, you're gonna need a chain nose pliers. You are going to need a round nose pliers. And then you're gonna need a dowel. So anything two to 2.5 inches is good. So I have a <laughs> two to 2.5 inches is good. So I have a 1.5 inch dowel here. That's okay, I'm gonna show you. <laughs> how to make that work for a bigger circle. If you have a bracelet mandrel, you could also use a bracelet mandrel. Um, I was just a little bit too frazzled at the beginning of um, getting ready to stream to go and grab, but but I will show you how to use a smaller dowel to create a bigger circle. Shall I? Mm -mm. Okay. So, I'm gonna Tim gun this stuff. Sweet. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little bit of cutting. And by a little bit, I mean a whole lot of cutting. So I'm gonna take my whole 48 inches of chain and I wanna cut it into individual little bits. And I want those little pieces um, to, to vary anywhere from 3 eighths to like 5 eighths of an inch. And um, I'm not actually even measuring that, I'm just totally eyeballing. This is my favorite way to cut multiple lengths of chain, or length, not lengths, lengths of chain, is to use a head pin. So you can just thread your chain onto your head pin and then just line your chain up with the rest of them. And, and if I were trying to cut these all at the same length, I could line it up with the rest of them and I could cut it at the same length. Since I'm just trying to keep them all in the same sort of ballpark, I'm just gonna cut it so that it sort of matches in with my chains that I've already cut. And then I'm gonna string the end link of my chain again on my wire, my head pin, and I'm gonna cut. And I like doing this with a head pin better than a piece of wire for a couple of reasons. 
Um, reason number one is that the head of the pin most of the time will stop the chains from falling off the end, which is nice. Number two, head pins tend to be half hard, which means they're um, stiffer than wire, and they're not going to bend as much, which makes it easier to, to get a consistently, you know, reliable vision of how long your wire is going to be. If you have a piece of wire and it's, say, curved or bent, you know, obviously that's going to impact, you know, especially, especially if you're trying to cut um, pieces of chain that are the same length, that is going to negatively impact you, your ability to do that. But your head pins, generally speaking, will stay nice and straight. So I am going to just chop up this entire 48 inches of wire, and it's going to take me a minute to do that. And yes. I tried to pre-do that before the stream, but things here at the Beating Dreams were not conducive to that right before the stream. But it's okay, we had a good day. It was warm today, though not as warm as it's supposed to be tomorrow. I think we only topped out at 95 today. I think tomorrow we're supposed to be back up to 99 or some such number of yuckiness like that. So I'm cutting all of this, once again, 3 eighths to 5 eighths inch pieces is what I'm cutting all of this into. And if you have less chain than 48 inches and 4 feet, you can use less chain on this project. Um, you just won't get quite as much of a, you know, heavy duty willow tree effect, but it can still be very cool. Um, and the piece, that, the piece that I was inspired by for this is actually completely chain. There were no beads on it at all. And I just decided that that was way, way too much cutting um, and way, way too much chain expended on one project. So that's why I decided to incorporate those 2.5 millimeter beads. So cutting, 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 cutting. So let's see, it is of course Saturday night. That means that when I'm done with this tutorial, we will be um, getting on at 7.30 p.m. for our live merchandise sale. I have all kinds of fun organics for you tonight. I have lots of cool new bone strands. I have some really fun coral strands. I've got some neat um, ceramic and some really cool glass. So we've got kind of a, an organic style boho themed stream for you all tonight. So hopefully that's going to be lots of fun. All new merchandise, all things that we have not had on stream for you before, so that's going to be a good time. I know watching somebody cut chain is probably one of the most fun things that all of you are going to do this entire weekend, is watching me cut this chain is just like, you know, rocking your socks, I'm sure. My it's probably, <laughs> yeah, it's probably more fun to watch you than do it, though. That's fair. Yeah. Cutting cutting chain is kind of a pain in the Gajwanska. It's true. It's one of those repetitive things. I will say if you're cutting, you know, multiple lengths of chain at different sizes, um, it's a little bit less of a pain than when you're trying to make them all the same size because you don't have to be quite as precise with your cutting as, once again, as if you were trying to make them all identical. Yes, I have uh, gardening I really want to do tomorrow, and I'm so on the fence about whether I should or not. Because on one hand, I think I should, and the other hand, I think I should just rest on my day off, which is kind of a foreign concept to me, but... My body this week a little bit has been telling me that that might not be a bad idea, the resting on my day off, but see, I can't get Ziggy to do the gardening. This is the problem. Oh well. To be fair, they did have to deal with Mr. Personality, so he was pretty exhausting. I don't know if you heard any of his witty repartee. Oh yeah. Yeah, I was not able to listen to my book because of the... Right, and he was really loud. Uh, cool, and on and off rainy in Edmonton. See, I need that weather to just come visit down here tomorrow. 
so I can do my gardening and not like kill myself to do it. But yes, yeah, Ziggy Stardust, terrible gardener, absolutely refuses to weed, even though he's got little built-in weeders on his little peats. Nope, he refuses to weed, refuses to mulch, won't, you know, won't even, you know, dig things up. Completely Unless useless. you really don't want him to. That is, that is actually true, because I was, um, when I had some, uh, something in a pot, and I couldn't figure out what was, what was digging it up, and then I witnessed Ziggy digging it up. But hey, on the bright side, there have been no, um, random wildlife incursions into my house recently, knock on wood. Um, no, no wildlife fetched in by Ziggy or randomly just coming in of its own volition, so happy about that. And I'm almost done cutting this chain, I promise. I'm gonna, you know, stop running my mouth in a minute and actually start talking again about the project. But you can see when you use the head pin trick like this, it actually does go pretty quickly. And I do have to, um, I have to hold it in front of my face so I can see it, which is why I took it off the hand cam, because if I was doing it on the hand cam, it would have taken three times as long just because of the angle. But it goes pretty darn quickly. Like so. Almost there. Interesting. Darcy likes chives. I don't think that Ziggy likes... He does not like things that have strong smells to them. He prefers his grass to smell like grass and nothing else. Okay, so this is my whole, believe it or not, this is four feet of chain all cut down into little tiny pieces. Very small. Very small, but four feet of chain. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut my 26 gauge wire. That's going to be for, um, of course, the, the roots, branches, and the trunk of my tree. And I feel like that's okay. That math is right. I just can't count. Okay, so we're going to cut 12 pieces of 26 gauge wire and we want each of them to be about four inches long and that's where we get our 48 inches of 26 gauge wire and then once I'm done with all of that cutting I can actually start making the project so this is one of those projects that has rather a lot of prep work um, that goes into it it's all very repetitive and very easy prep work as you can see but it is one of those where it's like it, it takes a minute to get into it because you've got to do all this cutting first <laughs> oh no, oh goodness. Lori got attacked by a crow on her walk. That's so sad. Stupid corvids. Thinking they own the world. Did you see there's a little birdie family in that big ass fancy birdhouse by the church? No! Yeah! Oh yeah! They were sitting out front on their little birdie pack patio when I walked by earlier awesome. today. Six, seven, eight. All right, four more. Chilling, enjoying the weather. Yay. Chirping. Um, the 26 gauge wire, Lori, is getting cut into four inch pieces and I'm cutting 12 of them. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One more. Okay. So that is almost the end of my prep work. The last thing I have to do is take my 16 gauge wire and cut five inches, and then we are ready to rock and roll. I'm going to be victorious over here, too. Yay! Yeah. Hooray for victory all around. It was also a victory that I didn't. You didn't murder I anyone. I didn't murder anyone today, especially not that pompous jerk face customer. Loud, pompous, jerk face customer. Oh my gosh. Quite loud. Quite loud. Quite obnoxious. Still quite alive. Let me just say, once again, 
not with the murdering. Very proud of myself for that. Okay, so I'm going to take my 16 gauge wire and my one and a half inch dowel. And I'm going to just wrap this around my dowel. And I'm trying to make a circle, not a teardrop. So I am actually going to bring this all the way around my dowel like so. And I want to overlap it. So I have a significant amount of overlap and then I'm going to let it go. Okay, and then if I want to make this a little bit bigger, all I have to do is kind of stretch this out a bit. I think I'm actually going to leave mine at the smaller size just because um, I don't want this tutorial to take 7,000 years. But if you wanted to stretch it out a little bit, you absolutely could. Then I'm going to grab my chain nose pliers and I'm going to sort of eyeball the middle of this section. And I'm going to grab one of those wires with my chain nose pliers. And if there's a long one and a short one, um, you can grab the longer of the two wires. Mine are pretty much the same. So I'm just going to pick one, grab in the middle. I'm going to brace with my finger on the inside of my circle. And I'm just going to bend that up. So what I've done is I've now created a wire that's essentially aligned with the central axis of my circle. Then I'm going to take my chain nose pliers again. I'm going to hold across that circle. And this can be a little bit awkward because since your chain nose pliers function like a scissors, they really only hold what's closest to the joint. So sometimes you don't get all of the hold that you wish you had from your chain nose pliers. So just do the best that you can. And then we're going to take this crosswise piece of wire. So I've got the piece of wire that I bent up and then I've got the piece of wire that's going across and that's just going to come around and it's going to hook around that upright wire and if your fingers are not able to get a hold of it you can grab another pliers preferably another chain nose but if you only have a round nose you can see that you can make that work so i'm going to wrap this around like so so what i've done is now i've anchored that crosswise wire around my wire that's sticking up straight and i can do one or two things with this end i can cut it off or i'm just going to press it down because why waste that little bit of wire so I'm just going to squeeze it and it is going to want to slip but I'm just going to squeeze it see until it curls down right with my other coil so that I don't have a pointy stabby end because no one likes pointy stabbies pointy stabbies are bad like so now I'm going to make this wire into a loop and um, to do that I'm just going to bring it to the side because I've got a, um, I want, once again, I want the center of my loop to be centered over my large circle. So I just need to bend that back a little bit and grab my round nose pliers, grab at the end of my wire like so, and then I'm just going to roll that into a loop like so. And I do want to make sure that that little gap there is closed. like so. So that's my base. Um, so this is a really handy dandy shape to be able to make because you can use this for so many different things, not just for, um, you know, trees of life and things like that. This is a great base for an earring. There's all sorts of stuff you can do with this. So now I'm going to make the trunk of my tree. So I'm going to take all 12 of my pieces of 26 gauge wire and I'm going to hold them in a bundle. I'm going to, did you do it? Yay! Alright, I'm going to take my chain nose pliers and I'm going to hold these and I'm going to kind of crimp them so that they're a little flat and spread out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold, um, pinch my fingers about an inch away from my pliers and I'm going to twist opposite directions with my pliers and my fingers. And I'm just going to keep twisting. Make sure you get all those wires in there. There we go. And at some point, it's going to become a little easier to twist if you just take these wires and sort of splay them out. It's going to help you with um, getting a grip. Like so. And depending on the size of your circle, you want um, anywhere between 5 eighths to 3 quarters of an inch from um, for your trunk. So mine's about 5 eighths of an inch, and that's going to work fantastically well. Now I need to separate these into roots and branches. So my roots, which are my bottom wires, are going to get separated into groups of two. All right, so I'm just going to take out the wires that are basically next to each other. 
and to separate them into groups of two. And you just want to kind of splay them out so that they make a semicircle. Okay, so groups of two. And then we're gonna twist each group of two. So I'm just gonna take my chain nose pliers, I'm gonna hold each group of two with my chain nose pliers, and then I'm just gonna spin around the tree part. And you can see that wire is getting twisted. So I'm just gonna keep spinning that around, try not to tangle it in with any of the other roots. So I'm just gonna spin that around until my entire little rootlet is twisted. And then I'm gonna go on to... I like rootlet. <laughs> on to my next one. So again, hold with your chain nose and then just twist. your groups and since we had 12 wires in groups of two you should have six groups if you find you have a different number of wires by accident it's not actually the end of the world um, you can just throw a third one into um, one of your groups so it's a pretty forgiving project so I'm just continuing to to hold and twist my little root wires until they get all twisted. And you don't need to twist the whole thing. I've got about an inch of twist on each of these. Right, last one. Okay, so that's all my roots. Now I'm gonna do my branches. And I'm going to start by separating my branch wires, which are the ones, obviously, that I haven't twisted yet, into groups of three. Okay, so I want groups of three. And you're going to have, once again, by the math, you're gonna have four groups of three. And you're gonna twist each of these groups of three, but not very far. You're just gonna make like a quarter to three eighths of an inch of twist. And all this serves to do is kind of spread everything out from the center so that your, your beads and such aren't all mashed together in the middle of your tree. Okay, so there's my first twist. Again, I'm just holding with my chain nose and I'm just gonna spin my little tree around. There we go. So that's our little twist on our branches. And then I'm just going to take my branches and I'm going to kind of spread them out so that they, they are kind of like a fan on the top half of my tree. So now it's time to start attaching this onto our loop. So what we have is this, you know, kind of pointy stabby thing that does, you know, look like a tree at this point. So we're going to start with the roots and we're just going to drop that guy onto our frame and we want the roots to be about the bottom say 25 to 33 um, percent because if you'd go too high up with your roots then notice now I have no place for my branches which of course are the most interesting part of this and I'm going to center this underneath my loop so that it's relatively straight up and down and then I'm just going to start with the center roots here and I'm going to just wrap them around my frame and if your fingers are too big like mine are to you know kind of reach through these little little narrow areas this is where your pliers are very helpful 
and you want to wrap each root around a couple three times. You don't need to go crazy with the wrapping of the roots, but you do want them to be on there nice and securely. So I'm going to go now to my next one. And again, it's just going to go around my frame. Now, if I wanted to, I could have hammered this frame to make it a little bit sturdier. That's definitely an option. I chose not to do that more because of time than anything else, and also the fact that I didn't want to go get another two or two, because it's been that kind of day. And I'm on my last one. So notice I'm not cutting any of these little stabby bits off at the moment because there's always a chance that I'm going to want to readjust something and if I've already trimmed it off that's going to be really difficult. I'm just going to wrap that around and there's my last one. Okay. So now all my little roots are wrapped on. Um, now notice this has become uncentered. It um, should be easy to just sort of slide it over. I will say that if that's a problem that you tend to have frequently, um, not hammering your frame is going to be helpful in that. Now I want to take each of my roots and I just want to give them a little bit of kind of a gnarly look. So I'm just going to take my chain nose pliers and I'm just going to grab the root and I'm just going to twist. So I'm just making my roots not straight. You can twist the same direction on all of them or twist opposite directions, doesn't really matter. I'm just going to give them a little bit of personality. And once you're done giving your roots personality, now we can trim all of these pieces off. And once again, pointy stabbies are bad. So after we have trimmed off our root pieces, we're going to take our chain nose and we're just going to grab the end of that wire and we're just going to rotate it around and what that's going to do is that's going to smash it down nice and tightly against your frame. So what you want is you don't want to feel a whole bunch of rough edges on the back here and that is sometimes going to relocate your root so make sure that you're paying attention to that. So again I'm going to trim it and then I'm just going to grab and rotate that around Rotate that around to get rid of my pointy stabby bits. I'm just going to do that for all of my little root groups. Maybe. There we go. So once again, you just want to make sure everything is, is pressed down nice and securely so you don't have a whole bunch of rough edges on the back of your pendant. Ooh, Sophia has ice cream. I'm jelly. We do not have ice cream here at the Beating Dreams. We may still have chocolate though, so I'm kind of excited about that in between streams, but ice cream I think we do not have. Okay, Heather left me some chocolate. That's exciting. Please tell me you're eating something that's not chocolate. Good. Hooray for actual nourishment. Okay, so that's my little roots, and then the next thing I want to do is I want to give my um, trunk a little bit of personality as well. So I'm going to do that same thing that I did with my roots. I'm just going to grab my trunk with my chain nose, and I'm just going to give it a little bit of a bend. And you can bend it, you know, you can leave it kind of bent off center like that, or you can bend it back. But I just love, you know, the kind of like bonsai looking um, sort of thing that happens when you do that. Now, you may be noticing right about now, as I just did, that I lost a wire here. When I was twisting it, it, it came off, it broke off. This happens um, especially if you are holding with your chain nose pliers and you're holding a little too hard. So um, there's really, well, okay, there are things I could do about this if I wanted to. I could actually add another wire on here if I so chose, or I can do what I'm going to do, which is I'm just going to continue on without that wire. So once again, this is a pointy stabby, which we don't want. So I'm just going to take this wire right where it's broken off. And I'm just going to grab it and fold it to the back and just crimp it down. And that's it. Really easy to tie off. No need to, no need to stress, no need really to worry about that wire not being there. It's just one less branch, which considering how, you know, incredibly busy this pendant really is, 
nobody's going to notice. Okay, so now we're going to start assembling our branches. And I like to start with one of my two bottom ones. It doesn't matter really which one. Um, we'll go and um, start with the left-hand one for once. So now we're going to take our 2.5 millimeter beads. And again, I've got 2.5 millimeter round silver beads. You can use whatever you want. I mean, you could use silver beads, you could use green beads, you could use labradorites, like anything, anything that's 2 or 2.5 millimeter will work. And again, this is just to take up some space on your branches because the chains take up pretty much zero space. So, I mean, as you can see by this here, like if I were to fill that entire branch with chain, I would be using like two feet of chain per branch. And I decided I did not want to invest that kind of money into this project. So the beads just take up space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple of beads and then I'm just going to catch a piece of chain on my branch and just pull it off of my head pin and I'm going to do that with a couple, three, four. So I like to cluster the chains. And sometimes you're not going to get the right one and so you're going to try, you know, be trying to pull everything off. Okay, so there's a third one. I'm going to do one more. So again, you just want to catch the end link of that chain and just pull it off. All right, so that has, all right, so I've got a nice little cluster of chains on there and then I'm gonna do a couple more beads and then a couple more pieces of chain. So my goal um, with these beads and with this chain is to kind of stagger it a bit so that hopefully on my, on my next branch, you know, I'll have chains that are gonna kind of drape over these beads. So I'm gonna do a couple more lengths, of, a couple more lengths. Sorry, my brain has officially um, decided to stop differentiating between the words length and link. Once again, I'm just gonna blame that on the fact that it's the last day of my work day and my talker is tired, as is my thinker. All right, and I think one more bead is um, what's gonna go on here. Uno mas bead. And then I'm gonna go ahead and anchor this branch around my frame. So once again, if your fingers can't get in there, use your pliers. You can just kind of use that to push that wire through. Try not to stab yourself, of course, and then pull it. And you want to pull it nice and tight to your frame. And just like your roots, you want to wrap them around two times, maybe three times, but you don't have to go crazy with your wrapping. All right, so that's my first little branch. So now I'm on my second branch, so now I'm going to try and kind of stagger the chains. So on this one, I did beads, chain, beads, chain, beads. This one I'm going to try and do chain, and then beads, and then chain. Let's see how that goes. So I'm just going to catch four or five lengths of chain, lengths of chain. Sorry, that really just is not, it ain't happening. Of course, being able to see the chain links is also helpful. So once again, I'm just threading that into my chain link and then pulling that off of my head pin. So I've got all of my chain lengths here um, just kind of hanging out on my head pin because it makes it a lot easier to just to see them. And it's a lot easier to handle when they're all on here as opposed to when they're just tiny little snippets of chain that are just sort of free ranging on your, on your bead mat. So, all right, so I've got my chain there. Now I'm gonna do two beads. And then I'm going to put on a little bit more chain. And in the supply list, I did say 50, approximately 50 of those 2.5 millimeter beads. But the real number is really going to depend on you. So um, every time I do one of these, it's around 50. Sometimes it's a little bit less. Sometimes it's a little bit more. It might be less tonight because of the fact that I lost that branch, but I wouldn't count on it. Oh, Presbyopia, you are not my friend. Presbyopia means my eyes are getting old. It's a fancy way of saying that 
I'm getting to the bifocals age. Well, not getting to, I'm, I'm there. I'm officially at the bifocals age. I just don't have bifocals because of course that happened to me like three months after I got brand new glasses and now I'm just being stubborn. So that's my second branch and I'm, once again, I'm gonna wrap that around and through. Yes, I love the texture that the chain adds to the piece. Um, I've made a ton of, of, you know, these little trees of life, like we've been teaching this class, you know, at Beating Dreams for as long as, practically as I've had Beating Dreams, which has been a minute. Um, but yeah, I, I always love the, um, the idea um, or the opportunity to give it a new twist. Okay, so now next, once again, bead some chain, bead some chain. I think we're probably getting the hang of this at this point. And I am kind of dropping some lengths, off, lengths of chain off of my head pin. That's okay. I can grab those off of my bead mat in a little bit and use them. And if, you're, if some of your chain pieces are too long, you can always cut them down after you've put them on your, your tree. So like if I decide that I don't necessarily like all of this hanging down, I don't have to keep it. I can totally trim it off. Okay, so now I'm going to take this one and, and just like we did with the previous two, we're going to wrap that around again. If you can't get it with your fingers, use the pliers, use the tools. Tools are your friends. Around. around like so. Okay, so since I lost those two, I've got eight more branches to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep adding my beads and my chain until I've got um, all of my branches full of stuff. And I am cheating just a hair here. You can see I made this twist a little bit extra long um, so that I don't have to put as much stuff on there. What I'm gonna do to make it a little more interesting though is I'm gonna do one of those little kind of gnarly bends in there just to give it a little bit more personality. Um, but yeah, I totally, I'm totally cheating. Like the top of my tree is gonna be a little bit less full than the rest of my tree. Which is totally a valid way of keeping your stream sort of on time. Since we do have a live merchandise sale at 7.30 p.m. Yes, that is in just 34 minutes. We've got lots of fun stuff for you tonight, though. We've got organics, um, by which I mean we've got some coral, we've got some bone, we've got some new stuff in. Um, we also have some glass and some ceramics. So we have a lot of sort of chunky, um, kind of, you know, boho, hippie, organic, cool stuff on the stream tonight. It is not going to be a tiny, shiny stream tonight. There are no tinies, and there's not a lot of shiny tonight. So we're going to... Um, Oopsie, that was the wrong one. So we're gonna um, service some of our people out there who want a little bit more funk in their in their necklaces, bracelets, whatever you're you're making, and um, we've got all kinds of cool funky stuff for you tonight. So that's tonight's sale, and of course, in honor of Father's Day, um, we are going to be drinking the vasectomy, which is um, a cocktail, um, which. Uh, showed up on my Facebook stream uh, because Aviation Gin. Um, <laughs> well, you know, I can't do tiny shinies all the time, Lori. But there are some really, like, I know you like interesting things as well, and not everything is giantly huge. Um, there's a lot of kind of team medium chunky in tonight's sale, and there's some really cool things. Like, these beads are awesome. They're they're bone, but they actually have holes in them. Like, I mean, not, not just the one you put the string through, but like full on holes through the bead, which I think is so fun. They remind me also of the um, the Kadama from uh, Princess Mononoke. So I like them for that as well. But so lots of fun things for tonight's stream. Okay, so continuing on, just adding my chains and my beads until I've decorated all of my little branchy bits. Let's see, you're next. So 
say it's fun times. So yes, organic, chunky, uh, on stream tonight, that's going to be loads of fun. That starts, um, it's going to be probably just judging by the fact that it's now 7 o'clock and I am not done with this project, though I am getting close. Um, I'm going to say we're probably going to start around 7.45 with the sale, um, which is kind of par for the course for me anyway. Okay, that's my next one. I'm going to anchor that on. And, oh yeah, vasectomy. I'm like, I had a train of thought. Yes. So, um, the vasectomy is um, a gin cocktail in honor of Father's Day, and it was actually um, put out on an ad by Aviation Gin, which is owned by Ryan Reynolds. So, yes, there's an adorable video of Ryan Reynolds making this cocktail, um, which is uh, definitely a not terrible thing to watch. So... We are going to do the vasectomy tonight, which is basically gin and tonic with cranberry juice. And that's our signature sip for the sale. So, as, as usual, sale should be a rollicking good time. You know, we, um, Heather and I are guaranteed to get silly about something at some point. Also, I feel like having a cocktail called the vasectomy is just, you know leading into shenanigans before the sale even officially begins. Okay, so I've got five more left. So I'm going to continue decorating. So once again, you could absolutely use something that's not a sterling silver bead. I just kind of liked the unified look of it with the sterling silver so it didn't look so much like I was just trying to, to take up space. But you can use anything you want. And if you did want to fill up the entire branches with chain, like, you go for it. Like, if you've just got, like, you know, 30 feet of chain that you're just dying to do something with, this would be an amazing, amazing project for it. But, you know, once again, you're probably, if you, if you choose to do that, you're probably looking at about two to three feet of chain per branch. <laughs> right? Topics of conversation from beating to vasectomies. I feel like nothing can possibly go wrong with that. Nothing at all. Not on our stream. What? No. Things never go off the rails on the beating dream stream. Never, never. I mean, at least when we go off the rails, usually we're fun. So there's that. You do. All right, so three more. Bless you, sneezing, Heather. So many allergies. Oh my God, so many allergies in Dallas. Um, and then I was having this conversation with a client earlier and she was like, oh my God, so it's not just me? I'm like, oh no, it's not just you. I finally had to double up on, you know, allergy meds to get my um, headache to go away, which I finally did. Yay! So happy about that. But yeah, it is just the worst. There's pollen, there's dust, there's mold, there's everything that there can be just sort of happily, you know, flying around in everybody's sinuses today. All right, so I'm down to three. So once again, I'm going to wrap that one around. This is how my tree is progressing. So again, if you used more chain and less beads, then you just have, you know, more of that kind of chain movement sort of look going on. But once again, the chain doesn't take up hardly any space. So, you know, the fewer beads you decide to use, the more chain you're on the hook for. You have to watch my concentrating face. Which is definitely something that everybody wants to see on the internet, except not really. Do, do, do. You don't know what people want to see on the internet. Well, that's true. I mean, I feel like there's actually a pretty wide variety of what people want to see on the internet, which is one of the great things about the internet, is it doesn't all have to be homogenous and the same thing that, you know, everybody wants to see. But still, I feel like my concentrating face is maybe a little weird. Do. 
so I'm just continuing on with adding beads, adding chain, like we're at the repetitive portion of the project here where it's like, okay, we know this now, you know, let's get to the, let's get to the big finish or something like that. Um, I'm getting wrapping. Let's see, so I do have a really um, terrible habit of when I wake up in the morning, I will sit in bed and just scroll through Facebook for about 30 minutes. It helps me kind of ease into the whole horror of being awake um, in the morning and whatnot. Um, but so I, and so I am a terrible sucker for all of those stupid lists that are on Facebook, all the crack lists, all the BuzzFeed lists, all the, you know, 23 things you didn't know about your cat. Like that's at, at 8.30 in the morning, that is totally, totally me. Um, but there was one that I was reading um, the other day about like little known scientific facts. And um, apparently if you're outside and all of your hair stands on end, you're probably about to get struck by lightning. So fun facts, fun facts to know and tell, things that could potentially save your life. Um, of course, I think, you know, the, the best thing is, hey, don't go outside during a lightning storm, but sometimes you have no choice. Sometimes you're already out. Sometimes you don't find the lightning storm. Sometimes the lightning storm finds you. I would be very interested to see Heather's hair all stand on in, though, because that would be a thing. I'd be nine feet tall. Well, then you definitely get struck by lightning. Yes. But I cannot, I, that's the, and that is the only one that stuck with me from that particular list of little known scientific facts. But once again, I, I feel like at some point that could be useful. So now we've gone from beads to vasectomies to getting struck by lightning. And it's not even the sales stream yet. So we're in for some fun tonight. All right, last one. When are we not in practice? Well, fair. But I feel like with the level of allergy medication that I'm on, we're in for extra, in for extra fun because I think I'm going to be extra punchy tonight because I think I already am. Extra punchy is the point here. Good times. But once again, at least my head doesn't hurt. So hooray for fexofenadrine and loratadine working as a team. Yay. And if that's bad to take those together, just don't anybody tell me. I'm just going to enjoy the lack of pain in my left sinus and, 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 you know, worry about the rest later. Okay, so this is the last piece of chain. So those of you who are like four feet of chain, pish tosh, that's too much. Like, seriously. It, I really did use every single bit of my four feet of chain. So I'm going to end that with a bead. And then I'm going to wrap that around my frame. And then I'm going to do that same um, finishing, clipping off and finishing like I did on my roots, except since we are now at 707, I'm going to do it the fast way, which is assembly line fashion. All right, so I've got all my clips, and now I'm just going to press down all my pointy stabbies. Be careful. Um, try not to catch the chain in your pliers when you're pressing down the pointy stabbies, because you actually can um, literally like press right through it and break it, which is not exactly what we want to do at this point in the project. The good news is there's a lot of chain, so if you break one of them, you still have plenty of others. So I'm just pressing everything down. I forgot to cut that one. Go. So of course, if you're not in a hurry, make sure you do a good job of pressing down all of your pointy stabbies so you don't have any that are gonna stick up on the back of your piece and scratch somebody or catch on their clothes 
or do anything unpleasant. So I'm just going um, one at a time. There's really no wholesale way to do this. So you just need to get each pointy stabby just one at a time and just grab it and push it and rotate it under. Um, it's always fun when the chain gets stuck on the pointy stabbies. Make sure you um, get the chain off before you squish down your pointy stabby. All right, so that is the majority of your willow tree pendant. Now I'm going to take, and I'm not going to do all eight of them because um, of the time, but I'm just going to show you real quick how to put on your little accent beads if you so choose. And um, everyone out there prepare to be shocked because we're going to do this with a basic wire wrapped loop. So, <laughs> well yay Crafty Skull Corvus, you're welcome. I feel like any day is a good day for a willow tree. Okay, so I've got my little three millimeter pearl. I've got it on a 26 gauge head pin. I'm gonna grab my round nose pliers and I'm gonna make my lady with a scarf. So that means I'm gonna push my wire away. I'm gonna rotate my pliers back up over the top, rotate my pliers again and underneath and that gives me our lady with a scarf. And then I'm gonna decide where to put her. And this is something else that I wasn't thrilled with in my prototype, is that I actually put the, the accent beads on the chains before I put them on the tree, and then I didn't really like where they ended up. So, you know, I'm just gonna figure, okay, where, where do I want this? I can literally put this anywhere, because it doesn't need to be on the end of a link of chain. I can just pop this in to any link of chain anywhere in my tree. So I'm just gonna find a link put the end of my head pin through it, just feed that all the way up, and you want to make sure that you get that chain that you have chosen fully into the loop on that head pin. Okay, see how the loop of the head pin is fully around the chain? And then you just kind of have to deal with the awkwardness of this moment where you're going to take your chain nose pliers, you're going to hold across that loop, and you're going to wrap. Sorry, I don't seem to be able to get handle on the focus and lighting thing today. It's not being my friend. And it's only going to take a couple of wraps and then you're going to trim off the remains of your head pin. Now, I used a two inch head pin for this. Obviously, that was overkill. You can definitely use um, a one inch or even a three quarter inch. And then um, just like we do on any wire wrap, we're going to find our pointy stabby and we're going to press that down. And then, which I would do if I weren't, you know, Anyway, where did you go? Get back on the front. There we go. So now you have a cute little accent pearl in your tree. So I'm going to do one more just to make sure that we all got the gist of this. So once again, my head pin, teeny tiny pearl on my 26 gauge head pin. Grab your chain, or not your chainers, your round nose pliers. You're gonna go away, rotate, back up over the top, rotate underneath. That's my lady with a scarf. Figure out where exactly do you want it. Bless you. And so I'll put this one somewhere over here. Again, just find any link of chain. Catch that link of chain on your head pin. <laughs> awesome. Yay, it's gonna be a fun sale. All right, and then once you've strung that on there, you're just gonna hold across the loop. You're gonna wrap until your beads completely push down onto the head of your pin and trim your end off. And then find your pointy stabby and press that down with your chain nose. And you can continue adding your little accent beads as much as you want. And they are gonna kind of fall, you know, to the front and to the back as your chains are gonna move to the front and to the back of your piece. So, um, you know, if it's looking like you don't have enough peppered in, um, feel free to add a few more. Like the six to eight that I have on the supply list is absolutely 100% a random number. So really feel free to use however many you want. Um, and the other thing that I do love that people sometimes will do with uh, with a piece like this is they'll wrap another bead, like a round bead, be like a moon or something. I feel like that would be really fun with kind of the shimmeriness of this. 
So that's it. That's our Willow Tree Pendant tutorial for this Saturday evening live tutorial stream. Thank you all so much for hanging out with us and making this cool shimmery Willow Tree Pendant. So for anybody who doesn't know me out there, I'm Allison from Beating Dreams in Dallas, Texas. We are an actual brick and mortar retail bead store. We are here on Lover's Lane in Dallas, Texas. Um, and we are open for business. That means we are here to feed your need to bead six days a week. We're here Monday through Saturday from, ouch, from 1 p.m. until 6 p.m. If you're not local in Dallas, of course, you can find us on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beading dream five times a week with complimentary tutorial streams. We stream Monday through Saturday at 6 p.m. Central Time, plus a bonus tutorial stream at noon on Thursdays. And then, of course, we do live merchandise sales every Wednesday and every Saturday at 7.30 p.m. So it is Saturday. That means it's a sale day. It's 7.15. That means our sale is probably going to start closer to 7.45. So I'm going to clean up my class mess and um, get some things set for the sale and then Heather and I will be back with vasectomy, vasectomies, that's not how you say that word, vasectomies and beads and shenanigans and fun. So everybody, if you're planning on tuning in for the sale, I look forward to seeing you in about 20 or 30 minutes. If you're not going to make the sale, thanks so much for being here for the tutorial, and hopefully we'll see you on another stream really soon. We will, of course, be awesome. We'll see you in a few, Crafty Skull. Um, we will, of course, be dark Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, but we'll back, be back with another tutorial stream next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central Time. That's going to be an earring class. Um, it's going to be this one, which I have called the Deco Earring, so that's going to be a fun earring using some chain and some wire. So everyone who is going to attend the sale, go ahead and pour yourself a cocktail. If you need the recipe for our drink today, you can find it in the Discord. Um, I also posted it up on our social media, so if you go to our Twitter um, our Facebook or our Instagram, you can see a picture of um, Deadpool um, hugging a bottle of aviation gin. Uh, just follow that link and that'll take you to the video of Ryan Reynolds making the cocktail. I'll also have the recipe for that up in the move on um, when we come back for the sale. So everyone, grab your cocktails, grab some hydration, get comfy, get cozy, get ready for some retail therapy in the comfort of your bedroom, living room, office, or wherever you are watching the Beating Dream stream. So everyone, get ready and we will see you all very, very soon.